Welcome, this is Momentum. The section is Momentum Experimental Design. This section on the AP1 exam always will cover an experiment. So here's the scenario. Stephanie wants to see how to determine how far a, a block will travel off a table when another block hits it after sliding down a frictionless ramp. So you want to design an experiment procedure that Steph could use to graphically determine the relationship between the release height of the block and how far the object travels. In the table below, list the qualities and associated symbols that would be used to measure in your experiment and the experiment and the equipment used to measure it. Also list the equipment that would be used to measure each quality. You do not have to fill in every single row. If you need an additional row, you may add them to the spaces just below the table. All right. So first part is to describe the overall procedure to use referencing the table, provide enough details so that another student can replicate that experiment, including any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. So there is a key concept I want you to think about here when designing all experiments. This happens in real life. All experimental physicists will listen after someone has come up with a theory. So all the theory people will actually invent the math. So let the math guide your answer. Write out an equation and show it theoretically working backwards. So in the end, we want to see how far the object traveled. So we're going to use our kinematics equation. That's, this is the kinematics equations that we have. Notice that you're going to need the velocity of the block that travels off the table and time. You're going to need V naught and T. Remember, there is no acceleration in the X. That's why it's plus zero here. In the middle step, this is where it's during the collision. When things collide, we use conservation of momentum. We can say that when the block hits each other, it's an elastic collision because it's a block hitting and other block that is at rest, it's going to be equal to one block is not at rest, the other block is going to fly out. At the start, oh, here you're going to need the mass of both of the blocks and the velocity of the block that comes down the ramp. Okay. And at the start, this should be at the start here. You would use conservation of energy. The block's gravitational potential energy is going to be converted to the kinetic. So at the start, it's mgh at the top. And as it slides down, down the ramp, all the potential is going to get converted to kinetic, which is one half mv squared. Mathematically, if we work it out here, you will see that at the start, if you solve for v, that is how it would be, right? Two is just from the one half. The 10 is just g. The masses cancel out. So the velocity of the block that slides down the ramp depends on the height of the ramp, nothing else. Once it collides, the block's velocity that flies off the table is based on the momentum of the block that comes down the ramp divided by the stationary object's mass. Then in the end, the block that travels the distance is based on the velocity left at that table and the time in the air. Notice that this V will give you this V, okay? Because that's the velocity in which the block is coming down. Then this is, because this is basically um, MA and this is MB. This is the velocity that's going to be this one because that's the velocity of the block that flies off the table. With that in mind, you can now look at all the variables and you can now basically give me all the its, its equipment. You're gonna need the height, H. That can be measured by a meter stick or any length measurement tool that you have. Maybe a laser, mass, M1 and M2. You can use the electric scale. I recommend using an electric scale rather than a, um, than a um, spring scale. Then you're going to need the time in the air, so you're going to need a stopwatch. If you have a motion detector, that would be work much better, or a camera. But time in air, just use a stopwatch. Distance, travel, D, which is meter stick. Okay? Experimental design. 
one measure how high the ramp will be where the block slides two place the block um, m2 at the bottom of the table then place a block m1 on top of the ramp such that it will roll down and hit the block m2 that is at rest at the table so make sure they're in line basically four release the block then it's going to hit then the block's going to fly out after the collision you're going to measure how far m m1 traveled across the table or measure the time and six you're going to repeat steps two to five because those are the experimental steps for the collision multiple times to reduce error i recommend 10 times lastly um, here are some values so the predicted values are right here this is using calculations and this is actually the recorded value from the experiment why does the predicted velocity and distance not agree with the actual velocity and distance recorded? Okay. Notice that the velocity of the block that flies off the table is actually less. Except this one. This is greater for some reason. Hmm. And the distance traveled is super small as well. Right? It's like off by 0.20 meters. So what can cause that? Just... Expen experimental designs just think about what is the assumption that you made right one you assume that the system to be closed and conservation of energy and momentum is implied that doesn't work right energy was actually lost to thermal and drag thermal is because the ramp we try to say it's frictionless but there is going to be friction and there's drag because there's air resistance as the block is flying in the air all right Three, during the collision, the block that came down and hit the ramp, uh, remember the block that came down the ramp, All right? It's going to hit the other block. Remember, this was at rest. So in the end, in theory, um, M1 and M2, in theory, you wanted M1 now to be at rest. And this M2 is going to go this way. In theory, M1, in reality, is not going to be at rest. It rarely will head like that because depending on how it collides, not all the velocity is going to be transferred. So here you assume that during the collision, it collide perfectly so that the velocity got transferred. You can't do that. All right. That's the reason why the velocity flying off the table was different every single time because the collision between those two blocks were um, different each time the distance traveled changes based on the velocity that came from the collision all right so there you go that is an experimental design question that you can possibly see when it comes to momentum this also gives you an indicator of um, what tools you need what type of experimental procedure that you need as well as um, the different mathematical equations that you might see when it comes to energy and momentum together on the AP1 exam, All right?